Guys, welcome to a very special FFA Cup final edition of Victory TV presented by Canva. I'm your host, Jake Barkadesh, and I'm joined by Melbourne Victory women's captain, Kayla Morrison. Kayla, welcome. Thanks, Jake. Excited to be here for a massive week for the club. And I'm also super excited for a big season of Victory TV. You're right. It has been a big season so far, and it's a massive week for the men's side as we look to lift its first piece of silverware since 2018. And of course, our second FFA Cup trophy since the inaugural one in 2015. Now, Kayla, you're no stranger to lifting trophies at this club. I mean, what's that feeling going to be like? What are the boys going to be feeling like this week? Look, that was an unforgettable feeling. It was a great, you know, season for us and for all the girls. And now I'm super excited that the boys will hopefully get to experience that same thing. I've spoke with a few boys and the coaching staff and they feel they've covered every base they can for the final. So looking at that and what we've seen so far this season in the league, I think they've got what it takes to do it this weekend. We all hope so. Fingers and toes crossed. It's been a weird and wonderful journey for the final for Popper and the boys having to qualify for the FFA Cup. The round of 32 with a playoff against Perth Glory in Adelaide of all places. Let's take a look back at that match and our first three FFA Cup rounds. Well, here come Victor. As you can see, also the pitch is a little bit uneven and bobbly in places, which is why they're going to have a go. Oh, how about that? 38 seconds on the clock, and Melbourne Victory are in front with an absolute bomb. What a goal! from Leighton Brooks. He thumped that in from 25 metres. Cameron Cook beaten on his starting debut in the FFA Cup. And this was a goal to remember from Leighton Brooks. Goalkeeper off his line. What about that? Well, that's a fantastic strike. He had to hold his run as the ball bobbled towards him. And you can just see, he just had a little look up, saw the keeper off his line and off he hit. And what a strike that is. Cook left rooted to the spot, could do nothing for it. And what a start. He needs to score. And he can't. That is a really good save by Jared Tyson. And it's the youngster off the bench, Anthony Levan, for a place in the round of the 32 of the FFA Cup. And he scores. And it is Melbourne victory who win the penalty shootouts. Frantic stuff here at the end. And Will Wilson is off. He's got Laurie Latanzio with him. It's a tough angle from here. Laurie Latanzio to win it. Potentially, it's a penalty to Melbourne victory. They have the chance to win it potentially with the last kick of the game. Can you believe it? And two weeks in a row, Anthony LeBan with the winner. The looper lay into Laurie Latanzio. Makes it 1-1. And we have a level game here at Gold Coast Croatian Sports Centre. The victory bite back. Wants to be in a more area of delivery. Headed away by Martin Cruz, blocked by Brown. Back for the victory strike from Wilson. Bello, Wilson outside of the butte. That is unbelievable. If I was Scott McDonald, I would certainly not be happy as a ball now hits the post off the back of Langdon. Off the line eventually. A scramble. And how did Volupale miss that one? Reverse pass for Schmidt. Oh, good to ball. the back post, headed down, is it put away? Oh, it's a mirage hit. With the last kick of the game, you could not ride it. And an absolutely valiant effort from the Gold Coast Knights. They're unable to slay the Giants that are Melbourne victory. It just pumps you up watching that, doesn't it, Kayla? I Absolutely. mean, a couple of crazy rounds there. How did you see that? Well, it was a real test of squad depth in the early stages of the competition. And a few of our younger academy guys had to travel and hit the field midweek, ducking and dodging COVID as well. But overall, I think the squad managed the situation well and obviously played a major role in us being here today. And one of those players that played a major role, we can't forget in the competition of the whirlwind that it was in the early stages of the FA Cup, was Jared Tyson. Jared, thanks for joining us. 
Hey, Kayla, Jake, good to be here. Mate, as we saw, the early stages of the Cup was certainly a bit of a crazy time for everyone involved, especially you. Can you give us a bit of background about how you, I guess, ended up in goals for Melbourne Victory through that period? Yeah, it was a, an interesting time. I, I suppose the, the short story is, uh, yeah, Matty Acton obviously hurt himself in training at a pretty you know, crucial time for the club coming into the start of the A-League season. But uh, I imagine the club, you know, had the foresight to look forward at some of the really challenging obstacles for the year, you know, being in the FFA Cup and, um, uh, you know, the uh, very congested A-League season um, and obviously needed someone that could come in and, and not just be a, a competitive squad player, but someone that was capable of coming in and, and, and playing. Um, you know, fortunately for me, you know, I was in Melbourne. I've been playing here for the last three years uh, with Green Gully uh, Soccer Club in the in the NPL. Albeit we had our last two seasons cancelled, but um, you know, I've spent four four years pretty much with with the boss on um, two separate spells. So uh, he understood me, you know, pretty you know, very well, uh, probably better than I know myself in terms of football, <laughs> I imagine. And um, and you know, obviously, I had no. Uh, qualms or any um, you know uncertainties around what he expects as a manager so um, it was a, a situation that just worked out really well for everyone. We were so lucky to have you and obviously happy to have you at Victory. Um, how tricky was it for you especially to not only come in late but for the boys to play with an almost completely different squad from the weekend's matches? Uh, it wasn't difficult at all. Um, I suppose you know, that's where I, I, I could rely a little bit on, on the experience that I, I have got. Obviously, you know, nine or ten years in the A-League, um, you've pretty much played with or, or against everyone. And, uh, and that was certainly the case at, at Melbourne Victory. I knew a, a lot of the boys and, um, and they were really familiar with me. So that initial um, entry to the club was, was really comfortable. Um, in terms of the, the squads changing between the FFA Cup and, and the A-League, it was... Um, uh, it was kind of enjoyable, if I'm honest. You know, the the FFA Cup squad or the the Cup Killers, as we sort of called <laughs> each other, um, were uh, were really close close knit. Um, you know, squad that would go off and do these away trips, and you know, we we'd come back and tell stories to the, the A League boys. You know, as we used to call them. Um, you know, about the, the the trips, and you know, it was it was always our impression that the A League boys were actually trying to get into our FFA <laughs> Cup squad. So. <laughs> Um, you know, it was as, as a whole, the Melbourne Victory squad um, is incredibly close um, from the youngest player to the most experienced. You know, everyone is looking out for everyone. Everyone's working as hard as they possibly can because, um, in all honesty, everyone wants to play every game. And um, although, you know, I was only on an injury replacement player, I was the same. I went in and just absorbed that that ambition, that desperation to, to be the best, that, um, that desire to just win at all costs. And um and yeah really enjoyed the opportunities i got to to be involved and uh to play my part in in the cup the jared tyson way it's not the first time you've been throwing the deep end in your career and stood tall as we know but uh is there a game that stands out for you in particular that you hold fond of those memories uh yeah in terms of our ffa cup run i suppose the the big game for me was the adelaide city um, you know, yes, the, the game before that we, um, you know, we qualified for the round of 32, first of all, through a, through a shootout. And that was, that was obviously quite a, a memorable way for me to make my debut for the, for the club. But um, I suppose the Adelaide City game sort of stands out for me a little bit more. I was obviously quite busy during that game and, um, uh, you know, had to, um, you know, make a few saves throughout the game. And it was probably one of those games where, in all honesty, people probably looked in and thought we didn't deserve to win. But, you know, at the end of the day in football, we didn't concede and we scored more goals than the opposition. So um, so we won. But uh, that was probably the game that we walked away and, and thought, you know what, as a, you know, people were calling us a young, a, a youthful squad, a this squad, a, a second string squad. And um, for us as a group, that was a, a really good moment um, to actually go, no, do you know what? We, we are actually a, a good squad that can um, do some real damage in this competition. And it really gave us a lot of confidence moving forward. And particularly for those young boys, I know the boss made a real point of, of um, highlighting this in the change room after the game. But those are the sort of memories that you really want to hang on to. Um, because in football, things go wrong. Things are tough. You can't always be um, at the top of your game and you can't always be winning. But in those moments, 
you need to remember that you know you can still win you can still find a way and um and that was a really pivotal moment for for us as a squad and and hopefully some really positive memories for those young players you mentioned before you knew it was obviously going to be a short stint at the club and and that your time was going to end uh, have you got anything planned now what's what sort of life going for jared tyson moving forward yeah, well, I suppose the actual opportunity itself to join the club came at a really awkward time for me. Um, my partner and I um, uh, were in the process of moving home to Queensland. Um, so at the moment that I got the phone call, uh, we actually had the whole house packed up. We had flights booked to, to, to go home to, to Queensland and um, you know, had you know, all sorts of things planned for our um, initial arrival. Um, my, my partner um, uh, is also um, 30 weeks pregnant. So at that point, it was a bit of a, a challenge to go, well, you know, you still need to go up because of all these things we've got planned, but I need to stay. So um, although the decision was a very, very easy one for me to make to, to stay and be involved with the club, um, you know, there were certainly some, some difficulties there. So uh, we moved up. Um, we've had so many engagements and um, and weddings cancelled over the last couple of years. <laughs> obviously, with all the restrictions, here's my partner and I actually got married uh, two weeks ago, which oh, was terrific yeah. with our um, with all of our family. Uh, we've got our little girl arriving in April, and um, I've just signed for the club that I played for the year before I I started my professional career. So it was that club that really helped. Um, progress me into professional football. So it's kind of a, a full circle moment for me. Um, by no means is is this a retirement plan for me. I think at 32, I've still got plenty of good football um, at any level of the game left in me. But um, certainly for this next 12 months, it, it needed to be a decision um, for my family. Um, and my wife and I are really excited to, to be home, um, to have a few less commitments and um, and just really focus on, on giving our daughter the, the best entry to the world that we can. Well, we look forward to seeing your daughter make her debut at Victory one day. Maybe <laughs> I'll still be there, I'll be old and wrinkly, but I'd love to see her there. I hate to go back and ask you this question, and I hope you don't close the laptop and end the Zoom call immediately, <laughs> but it would be wrong not to ask you about that penalty shootout, and specifically no, the penalty... <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Oh. And specifically the penalty you took. Let's... What, what was yeah. it? Walk us through um, it. talk about it, Jared. Come on. Look, if you guys want the, the honest truth, I didn't... Um, you know, that, that whole situation, we obviously went to penalties... Um, as a goalkeeper, you know, I sort of look back on my, my history with penalties and, you know, I'm pretty confident um, at, at saving penalties. My track record in, in shootouts is, I think, 100%. Um, so I, I always had a lot of confidence in, in saving them. Um, and I was speaking to the goalkeeping coach, Peter Zois, just about the, the research that we'd done on the players and, um, and about where we, what I was thinking. Um, and then the boss started calling out the names of the players that were, were going to take the penalties. And um, it got to number three and he called out my name. And, you know, instantly in my head, I thought, what, what's going on here? Is this like a, you know, it was never my intention to take a penalty in that moment. But, um, you know, I think it's also the thing I love about the boss and something that has been really true to him in, in his coaching career is he just gives players the opportunity to do special things. And, um, you know, it wasn't a, a pressure moment for me. It wasn't something that um, that he was putting on me as a, as a test. It was just literally here is an opportunity for you to do something really special at this club and, and score a penalty for Melbourne victory. Um, and to be honest, I, I stepped up. I put the ball down, completely <laughs> comfortable to hit it. And then I looked at the goal and it looked 35 metres away. I, I actually, it's... <laughs> We've it's all the been one there. thing in my in my 15 year professional career that I have never actually thought about, and that was taking a penalty. And what would I do? And I put the ball down. I didn't know where the ball was going to go, and I thought, okay, well, he's gone to his his right on all the other occasions, so I'm just going to hit it as hard as I can to his to his left. Um, and yeah, just sort of sliced a little bit too much, and it and it just um, whispered past the post. So um, you know. It is what it is. I was fortunate enough to have saved the penalty prior and then obviously fortunate enough to save the penalty after. Um, so no one really talks about it now except for you guys. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I suppose the, the big thing for me, though, is, um, is that opportunity. And, um, you know, that week at training, I was just thinking about it. And I was like, no, this is, 
as, as a professional, and both of you guys would know this feeling. Um, if you do something, you know, wrong, you make an error or a mistake, it's you, you're just driven inside to want to improve it. So immediately, you know, my ambition was right. Let's let's start thinking about this properly because if a penalty shoot up shootout comes in um, the next couple of weeks, I want to make sure that I put my hand up and I put that ball in the back of the net. So. Um, it's certainly not something that I, I panicked about in the moment. I think you can probably see the footage. I picked the ball up and or threw it away or <laughs> just got on with it and saved the next one. But um, it's certainly something that I won't hesitate from doing in, in the future and I'll make sure that it's, um, that I've practised and, um, and added that craft to my game as well. Awesome. Jared, I've never heard anyone describe missing a penalty so beautifully, but uh, you managed to do that. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's good to see you again, old friend, and I'm sure we'll, we'll see you again soon. Yep, yeah, you as well, mate. Good to chat to you both. See ya. Well, it was off to the quarterfinals and semifinals against South Adelaide and Wellington, where the boys were both down in, in both games, actually, but they showed the true hunger and fight that we love uh, to get back and push their way back into the final. So let's take a look at some of those matches. Gets us underway in the quarterfinals. Act two this season of the original rivalries. There you go. More foul by Miranda. Just see what comes from here because we know Craig Goodwin has a very sweet left foot. And he can hit a free kick as well. As well Ivan Kalava might be about to find out. As he does, and he has. There he is with his first touch of the football. Gary up. Brimmer. Fouled by Juan De. Was uh, one of the few shining lights for victory last season from set pieces, Jake Brimmer. We saw it in the first half, here it is again, the ball in, perfectly weighted. And it's Josh Brillante sneaking in at the back post, who has steered the ball in uncontested. Almost a feeling of general surprise around Cooper's stadium. Is it that simple? Oi. Jake Brimmer with a fantastic ball in. Oh, he's been caught in possession by Marjota. Brimmer now for Marjota. Appeals for a handball penalty. Penalty for Melbourne victory. As now, with 11 minutes left to play, Francesco Marjota, who scored his first ever goal in Australian football, into this very net a month ago, has repeated that performance, this time from the penalty spot. And victory lead Adelaide, having come from behind by two goals to one. Javi Lopez with the big up and under. Timoteu forward. Is there time? There is not. The defending champs are out. Adelaide eliminated by Melbourne victory, their biggest of rivals. Yes, GMHBA Stadium in Geelong, the venue for the semi-final of the 2021 FFA Cup. Piscopo gliding it through, Gary Hooper! And the Cup Specialist scores for Wellington Phoenix. Cruz, Economides getting ready, Brimmer now. Looking for some space, Sermon swept it away, only as far as Brillante. Just caught under the feet of Marjota. Enough time for Wellington. Brillante with a bullet from the edge of the box to get Melbourne victory back level. Less than 20 minutes to go, all of a sudden you've got to think about we're going to win this game. Cruz, dazzling, D'Agostino! May have put the dagger into Wellington Phoenix's cup campaign. But it was classy from Robbie Cruz, which set it all up and sent Melbourne victory into a 2-1 lead. Davidson drew... Everyone to the honeypot. Falami! Fabulous! This is a young man in a purple patch of form. As 
up and over the top. Economides. D'Agostino. If the first one wasn't the dagger, that one is from D'Agostino. And that's it. Victory are back where they belong. Chasing silverware. Well, all that has led to what is the FFA Cup final on Saturday night. We're joined by the boy from Bundy, victory captain, Josh Palante. Josh, thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Mate, how's the uh, lead up to the week been? Yeah, it's been a great week. We've had a, a full week to recover and then reset again for the final. So it's been nice just kind of going through each day and getting that feeling uh, flowing up to the final game day. Josh, as the women's club captain, I'm super stoked but massively jealous for you to be leading out the boys on the weekend. How exciting is it for you to lead this group out for the chance to win silverware so soon after what has been a complete revamp of the side? Yeah, awesome opportunity. You know, personally for myself uh, as captain leading the team into a final, it's, um, it's super exciting. For the club as well, uh, it's massive. You know, after the past couple of years, it's, it's not been great. Uh, the feeling... You know, it's been down around the place. So to have the start we've had to the season and now being in the, the final for the Cup, uh, it's an awesome opportunity and an amazing feeling. And these are the games that, you, you know, you, you strive to play for is, is the, the finals to, to win a bit of silverware. And, and obviously a bit of added motivation on top of that silverware. Josh, is the chance to qualify for the Asian Champions League. I assume that's a big thing. You could be facing the Spanish Lee Broxham in, in Andres Iniesta and, and Vissel Kobe. Is that, a, is that a factor playing in to the game on Saturday? Yeah, massive. I think that's uh, something that goes a little bit unrecognised is that, you know, winning this cup is an opportunity to, to be a part of the Asian uh, Champions League. And it's massive, you know, there's massive clubs there and some tough teams and it's an awesome op opportunity. I, you know, played in, played in the the, cup, the um, Champions League previously and, and it's awesome to play against those teams. So um, it's, a, it's a big, big opportunity here. Josh, everyone has talked about the depth of the squad this season, but the FFA Cup has really brought this out for everyone to see. How important is this competition for not just now, but for the rest of the season? It's, it's, it's uh, massively important to have a good depth like we do. I think we've shown throughout the Cup and even in through the league as well, we've got a lot of young boys stepping up and uh, showing what they're all about, and that's what you want. Um, it's a good opportunity for them to... to to show what they're made of and, um, you know, eventually they're going to be the ones filling, filling the shoes uh, for the future. Yeah, and it's a home match at Amy Park as well. Doesn't get better than that. How important will the home support be to helping the boys get over the line? Again, a huge. I think we feel this every, every time we play at home. Our fans are unbelievable and they're so loud. Uh, just the other day we, we played in uh, Geelong against Wellington and our fans were allowed the whole game it was it was awesome and it gives you that it's, it's like the feeling of having an extra play in, in the team um, you know especially coming coming home those last 10 20 minutes it's a nice feeling well Joshua boy we've got Jason Davidson's hair color changing we've got your beard changing colors there as we can <laughs> see but uh just want to thank you for your time mate for joining the show and uh you know best of luck for Saturday from all of us here I appreciate that thank you and it's not just the boys in action this weekend, Victory fans. Kayla's A-League women will be back in action against Wellington Phoenix. And it sounds like we've got a bit of exclusive news for the fans on Victory TV. We do, Jake. We're excited to reveal American Brooke Hendricks will join the squad for the rest of the season as an injury replacement player. Brooke is a super experienced defender who's played for West Ham in England and Brescia in Italy. And she'll add some steel to our defensive line when she arrives next week in the lead up to a possible finals campaign. This could be the home of uh, Victory TV, the, the exclusives of the club by the sound <laughs> of it. But great news for you and the girls as we look ahead to Wellington this week. And the newcomers have struggled in their opening rounds in the A-League women's. How have you seen their start? Look, it was always going to be a tricky season for them with a completely new team and being away from home. But each week they've gotten better and have showed some real positive signs as, the be as they begin to gel. Um, we just hope they don't gel too well this week. <laughs> That's right. And obviously our girls, they haven't been able to play in a few weeks due to COVID disruptions around the league. It's been a bit of a crazy time. I'm sure they're pretty keen to get back on the pitch. What's, what's the feeling been like? 
They're super keen to get back on the pitch, but I think the break came at a really good time for us. We were able to heal some injuries, and we were also able to do a lot of video, get on the field, you know, work through some things that were working and fix some things that weren't working. But we're ready to go again. We're ready to take on Wellington and hopefully put a lot of that newfound knowledge into that game. Awesome. Well, we're joined by actually one of my favourite players, the technical genius midfielder Alex Chidiak, who's actually at the airport ahead of the contest. Chids, welcome. No, thanks for having me on. I'm sure you're looking forward to getting back into uh, action this weekend. Obviously, you had a little bit of a break, but you must be you must be pumped. Yeah, I'm super excited too. We had like a trial game last week and definitely treated it like a, a real game. I was, I was way, way too into it. Um, <laughs> but now I'm really, really excited to get back out there. Chids, we know you're here on loan and that's wrapping up soon, which is sad for me, for the team, the coaches and probably even the fans. Um, but how have you enjoyed the time at the club so far? No, I've loved it. I mean, we've had um, a few hiccups with COVID here and there and I've missed uh, like a few games that I would have loved to have been involved in. But I mean, I'm really enjoying being a part of the team um, and a part of the club too. It's just been such a, like, a warm, welcoming um, feeling and yeah, we're going to have such a hectic period now and I'm so I'm going to get to know the girls a lot, a lot better too. And speaking of the hectic period, obviously Wellington's coming up first. Uh, it's pretty important three points for the girls uh, leading into that uh, busy period. You guys uh, must be really focusing on getting that win, I can imagine. Yeah, I think like we're trying to just take things one one game at a time. We know we have a lot of points to, to win in this period um, and this game is super important to, to pick up our form from the Wanderers match and keep pushing through. We're going we're gonna to gain a few more players as well um, that have come back from Asian Cup. I'm, I'm assuming in the next um, couple games as well, so that's going to be a big boost for us. But, yeah, we're just going to take things one game at a time, I think, and um, hopefully, yeah, get the three points each week. Well, Chids, I know you've got a flight to catch, but one last cheeky question before you go. Who are you hoping you do not sit next to on the flight? <laughs> I've been told to say Polly. She wanted a shout-out. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> lots of the girls have said that I don't want to sit next to her. She would talk my ear off and... Um, yeah, I think she does a few strange things on the plane, apparently. So I'm going to say it. I want to sit next to Polly. <laughs> well, safe flight and really good luck this weekend. I'm sure I'll talk to you before the game. Definitely. Thanks but very much. Guys. Thanks for joining us, Chids. Appreciate it. Oh, good. Well, it wouldn't be the FFA Cup final week without looking back on the memories of our first FFA Cup win and that special night at Amy Park that I'm sure you all remember in 2015. Uh, you know, silverware is up for grabs, uh, we want to be at the dance floor. It's going to be a fantastic night and we're really looking forward to it. And like I said, a chance to win a trophy doesn't come around very often. Everybody is exciting and really want to win it because it's a special trophy and uh, a great achievement if you can win. A lot better uh, players and coaches than me they haven't had the opportunity to play in cup finals. This is cup final night in Melbourne.
Well, one man who found the back of the net in that contest will be the opposing captain on Saturday in Oli Bazanich, and of course the other being Beshart Barissa. I caught up with Besh earlier in the week to chat about his recent retirement from football, his memories of the 2015 Cup run, and of course his time at Victory. Well, Besh, thanks, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you uh, giving us some of your time. You just touched on before we, we jumped on air that you're in uh, in Berlin. What was sort of, I guess, the feeling you have to the club now, Melbourne Victory? Is is it something that you hold dearly to your heart? Oh, 100%. I mean, uh, I remember like day one I arrived in this club. I, I really enjoyed every time, every moment of it. Uh, I mean, especially when you see the way the club is and, and with the supporters. Mm. Um, with the people running the club, I, I, I felt I'm in, in the biggest club in, yeah. in Australia. If I take you back to 2015, obviously a successful year for the club, but a great season for you, the 2015 FFA Cup run. Yes, I do remember. The, obviously, uh, uh, it was in Amy Park against Perth. For us, uh, it was really uh, important, you know, to keep... Uh, trying to to get more silverware you know for the club and for me personally i, I actually really enjoyed ffa cup and loved uh, mm. everything about it you know it's a, it's a great cup uh, for me it was really exciting i really wanted to win it and um we were all motivated yeah well we hope to see a repeat of that uh you know, coming up with the with the boys but yeah. as, as i touched on you you obviously won a couple of championships with with melbourne victory I know this is a bit of a hard question, but 2015, 2018, is there one that sort of stands out to you more? The one that stands out for me and was really special was the obviously the first uh, grand final win for Melbourne Victory. The moment I wake up, you know, uh, I knew uh, this is our title because, mm. you know, we've played in in uh, in Emmy Park, which uh, I, I think was all sold out and... and, and and it was unbelievable atmosphere. Do you remember the moment you scored in that grand final? Because it was some goal. I think it was your left foot. But the the noise in that stadium yeah. when you scored yeah. was like was just it was like you were probably playing back in Europe in a sense. But I felt, to be honest, uh, many 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 games, home games, like in Europe, uh, playing for victory. And that's the, the 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 special thing about victory and the supporters that what they create in this in this in this club. Yeah. And that's the special thing. So. Um, but yes, uh, I remember I actually tried to lay off to to Guy yeah. so he can score, <laughs> and somehow he lays back to me. Then I I thought, listen, now I take it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's too much play around. I take it now. Sunday, the eighth of December, two thousand and nineteen. You're obviously wearing uh, the Western United colours. For you, was that a, a little bit strange as well? Honestly, now I am retired. I can talk. Um, that was the one of the most painful thing I had to do. Uh, honestly, I, I, I give everything for my club, and that in that moment was Western United, and I, I went for win. I wanted to win mm. for the club, but it was super painful. I wish I could not play that game. What are you doing now to kind of fill your days and, and keep yourself busy? Well, I'm preparing my my coach's uh, license uh, badges. And I'm <clears throat> currently on the B license and uh, try to be a good coach. And uh, I'm already into it and work hard and try to learn how much I can. Uh, maybe we'll see a return to uh, Melbourne Victory in that capacity. I, you never know. I mean, I mean, for me at the moment, it's really all important, you know, to learn how much I can and uh, and uh, see what what happens. Uh, I mean, yeah. I love Australia, so it's uh, no secret that I love Victory. So I will be very grateful and happy if this can happen but uh, for now I need to learn a lot yeah well Besh honestly thank you so much for giving us your time we know you're a busy man and on the other side of the world so one of the greats and legends of, of the Melbourne Victory Football Club so it's, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you and uh, you know hear what you had to say I guess of, of the club and at the time you had here thank you guys so much for the interview and uh, yeah I wish you guys all the best uh, Victory all the best uh, uh, for the season and, of course, for the upcoming uh, FFA Cup final. I hope uh, they get it. And, uh, yeah, wish you all the best. And, uh, yeah, hopefully one day to see you guys. And, again, a big thank you to Besh, an absolute legend of the club. We love him dearly. If you want to catch a full interview that I had with Besh, head to the club channels this week and you'll get to see it all. 
I am so jealous that you've got to do that interview with not only a legend of victory, but a legend in the A-League himself. But that interview does just reaffirm to me that he is one of the most passionate professionals in everything he does, whether it's football or life. Yeah, he is, definitely. Uh, well, that's all that's left for us to look at in the cup final, Kayla. It's shaping up to be a cracker, isn't it? It is, Jake. I can't wait to see how the boys go with this one. The build-up for this squad started for everyone at Victory when Papa was appointed at the back end of last season. And as much as some people are surprised the boys have been able to get together in such a short space of time, I think all the work I've seen go on behind the scenes with his staff and JD as well really does show they're ready for Saturday. Yep, we're set for a huge day on Saturday at Amy Park. Do not forget to get your tickets via Ticketek, and if you can't make the match, it'll be live on Network 10 from 7pm. Don't forget, we'll have a big fortnight at Amy Park after the FFA Cup final in the A-League men's competition as we face Wellington on Wednesday, Newcastle next Saturday, and the Mariners on the return, which will hopefully be after a loss for the Mariners, of course. On the 19th of February, with the latter two matches being doubleheaders with our A-League women's team. Guys, Victory fans, that's it for our special FFA Cup edition of Victory TV presented by our good friends at Canva. The season of Victory TV will be kicking off on February 17th where we'll have a bit more fun with everyone involved at the club. And Kayla, that'll be exciting. It's been a pleasure. First episode. Yeah, likewise. I really enjoyed it and I'm really looking forward to the weekend. Will I be seeing you there? You bet you, bet you will be. Uh, well, for myself, Jake Barkadesh and Kayla Morrison, thank you for joining us on Victory TV presented by Canva.